welcome to our morning devotion. Today being Thursday, a new day that God has given us. Thank you for joining us as we continue to meditate on the word of God as we look at the letter of Paul to the Colossians. We have this month been looking at this book, looking at what Paul was writing to the people of Colossians, why he had a message for them, and what he wanted them to do. We remember that in chapter 1 introduces the supremacy of Christ being above everything, being creator and controller of all. And in this chapter, chapter 4, which you are going to start with today, we will be looking at Colossians chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Masters, treat your slaves justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. If you look deeply in this verse, you realize it is a continuation or the last verse of a passage that starts from verse 12 of chapter 3. Paul was writing to the people, the believers of Colossians, telling them to change their ways of life and also to be rooted in Christ. We realize that in chapter 3, in this passage, he starts by telling them to put off their old self and be clothed with the glory of God, to change their ways and also to put their trust in God. He also insists on loving one another and also being passionate, kind, and also having patience with one another. Paul was teaching of a new being in Christ, a new person in Christ, a changed person. We saw in chapter 3 that he was talking to a changed man, a changed husband, a new wife, a new child, a new slave or servant. And this morning he's also speaking to the masters. It is from this passage, therefore, that we want to see what Paul was teaching the people of Colossians. Paul had given instructions to the slaves, also the hired servants, that they should always be engaged in meaningful employment, that whatever they do, they should ought to do it as they are doing it to the Lord. He encouraged them to work heartily as if they were doing it for God rather than for men. He even wanted slaves and those who were engaged in very, very trying circumstances to develop a right attitude towards their employment. It is by having a positive attitude in what we do that we can work on it wholeheartedly. It is by having a positive attitude that we can work towards pleasing God and not men. Whether a Christian is a slave or also a free man, let us always remember that we are serving God in whatever we do. That right attitude will result in a heavenly reward. Remember, all we do for the Lord is not in vain. There is a reward. There is an eternal reward in heaven. Equally, Paul talks to those who are bosses or masters in their work. Believers, believers who are in positions of an employer, or who are above others in either in their businesses or day-to-day -day activities should act in a righteous and God-honoring manner. And in this verse, Paul says, Masters, grant to your slaves justice and fairness, knowing that you too have a master in heaven. It is good to say we are all masters in different ways. If you look in your life, we realize that you are above someone in one way or another. Though you may have been working as a servant, in other ways, there are those people who see you as a master. As you serve as a servant and expect fairness and justice from your master, Paul is also telling us that we too should have the same zeal to give justice and fairness to those who are below us. How should we act towards others in a fair and just manner? Paul says that those in charge should treat those under them in a godly, 
upright and respectful way. Remember in chapter 3, he talked that we should, he said that we should love one another. He talked of love for one another, regardless of our status, regardless of our tribe, regardless of our positions, regardless of who we are, our gender. It is through love that we can treat each other in a respectful way. It starts by knowing that God is above everyone and we are under his presence, that we can see each other as sons and daughters of God. He also says that wages should not be withheld, but should reflect fairness, honesty, and integrity. When we are above others, they expect us to give them their due wages in time, their rightful wages, equitable to what they worked for. It is at such a time that we are talking about fairness and justice, knowing that we are living in a corrupt world where people are not conscious of what they are giving others as long as it is benefiting them. There are many people who are suffering because they are not Give, they are not given their due wages in time or also their rightful wages. Paul is cautioning us that dishonesty in our work, in workplaces dishonors the Lord and is also unacceptable to him. Remember he's reminding us that we too have a master in heaven. How we treat others, God sees, God knows and there is that judgment day that he will judge our words and deeds. How have we been communicating or talking to those who are below us, our servants? Have we been fair in our words? Have we been respectful in our words? How have we been treating them? How about our deeds to them? Are they just? Are they fair to them? Have we disrespected them in one way or another? God sees and records these actions. That's why he's calling us to have the right attitude as a new man rooted in Christ so that we may not just be masters, but know that we are masters under a master in heaven. It is a call from Paul telling us that we have a duty as masters towards our servants. Number one, the duty he calls us to know is we should be justful or have justice for them. Masters must give their servants what is according to their contract or according to what is just in itself as to work, wages, food, and also correcting them. Justice is one of the things that we lack in today's world. There is a lot of injustice because people are using their positions they have to oppress others. But Paul is reminding us and cautioning us that let us be just to one another, especially to those who are below us. Those are the most are the people who mostly are affected by injustices in this world. We know that they feel they are not given their rightful rights and they are taken advantage of because of the injustices that we have in this country and also in the world at large. Paul also calls us that we have a duty to equality. Masters sometimes treat servants unequally in demanding inconvenient services and unreasonable amount of work and also withholding their wages. What Paul is telling us is do unto others as what you like others to do unto you. Don't give your servant a lot of work that you yourself cannot handle. Don't expect them to act differently than you would as a servant. Don't let them go beyond what they can just because they are below you. To Paul is teaching us that this is sinful before God, that we should see their, human, their humanity and also respect their human rights regardless of their position in the ladder of the economy. They ought to treat them so that they may serve them cheerfully 
and efficiently. Remember, you have people under you. You expect them to be productive. Unless they have the right attitude, they may fail to be productive. So to, for them to have the right attitude, we are called as masters. That we too should have the right attitude as we treat them, as we talk to them. Why should we have these duties of equality and justice to our servants? Paul insists, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. God's majesty and man's authority stand together. The Lord in heaven is the master of masters and will avenge the wrongs that may inflict on their servants. Remember, we are all under the kingship of God. We are all under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Paul is reminding us that let us not forget that we are not above the world because of the positions that we hold, because of the works that we do. But always remember, we are a changed people. People under the presence of God, under the authority of God, so that we may also treat those below us with humility. With humility, Paul has talked about humility in many of his letters, that he also says we should see others better than ourselves. Remember there was a reason why you hired that servant, you hired that mistress, you hired that maid to do the task that you employed them to do. Maybe it is because they are better than you in that position. Maybe they can do better than you would in the same position. Maybe you have no time to do what you've called them to do in that position. Let us respect therefore that they have something that we lack as their masters. Let us respect that they have offered their energy, their time to do that which they can do for us as masters. And we too as masters should do and serve them as we serve the Lord, remembering that there is also a master in heaven. Remember, for us to be rooted in Christ as masters, we ought to have a new perspective in Christ, knowing that we are not just ourselves, but we are under the lordship and kingship of Jesus Christ. We ought therefore to have justice and practice equality in all our workplaces and businesses. If we are privileged to have people under us, let us not take advantage of them, but preach the word of God in deeds by treating them rightly and respectfully. It is by through these deeds they will see Christ in us and want to know this Christ more because they know we have someone who is above us, someone we respect, and through this they will feel appreciated as our brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of their position, regardless of what they do in our businesses, in our workplaces, in whichever way we have employed them to be. Remember, it starts by being a new being, a new being in Christ Jesus, knowing him by reading the word of God, serving him, knowing that you are serving God in all our ways, and knowing that though we are masters, we are also servants to a God who is justful, who is very fair. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.